Joe Biden is killing gas car makers and destroying the middle class dream to own affordable cars. He's had enough and wants to ban all gas cars despite EVs not selling well. As the US presidential elections come closer, Biden is going to go against companies like Ford, Toyota, and GM and push the middle class into a corner. His motto is clear, force EVs on the middle class and give up on gas cars. Companies are waging a war against political leaders, throwing a massive protest. But just last week, Biden revealed a crazy new policy that could mean the end of gas cars forever. Why does Biden want to ban gas cars? Is the middle class being forced into buying EVs? Is the whole EV push one giant scam? In this video, I'm going to tell you why Biden wants to hurt the middle class, how the common folk like you and I can save ourselves before it's too late, and the aftermath of Biden's new EV policy. Biden is saying, all right, America, it's time to make a mega shift to EVs and hybrids. And he's not just suggesting it, he's pushing it with new rules that tighten the screws on car pollution like never before. The Biden administration has rolled out these new emissions policies that are all about cutting down emissions from cars that run on good old gasoline. He's saying it's to fight off climate change. And guess what? These rules are so tough, they're practically pushing car makers to flood the streets with electric cars. They're talking about nearly 70% of new cars being zero emissions in just a few years. Right now, only 7% of the total cars in the US are EVs. And since last year, sales have been going down due to three deadly EV problems that I'll tell you about in a minute. But despite all this backlash, Biden is still siding with EVs and ignoring the pleas of the common man. Now, the folks at the EPA or the Environmental Protection Agency and the White House are all good with this, saying it's the strongest move yet. They're talking big numbers, like cutting down a mountain of carbon emissions and saving oceans of oil. But when asked about the reality of how 80% of EV batteries are shipped from China or how countless children in third world countries work in poor conditions to get EV minerals like lithium and cobalt, no one has anything to say. There's a bunch of people from industry bigwigs to retired military folk raising the alarm. They're saying, hold up, this is gonna backfire. And let's not even start on the costs. Imagine shelling out over 70 grand on average for an EV when you could grab a gas car or hybrid for way less. In 2023, nearly 4,000 car dealers even came together and wrote a fiery letter to Joe Biden, begging him to stop pushing electric cars on dealer lots. And you know what? Sales numbers might lie, companies might lie, but these car dealers are the ones who are out in the real world understanding the market better than anyone. So when 4,000 of these dealers tell you EVs are not selling and rotting in their lots, you should probably listen. But Biden refused to pay any attention to this and continue to ship materials from China. But wait, there's always more. While Biden is going with EVs, there's someone who's fighting for the common man. Trump is out there saying Biden's been keeping the truth from us, claiming that this whole EV push is benefiting China more than us, with our jobs on the line and our markets crashing. He's slamming the brakes on the idea that America should go all in on electric, warning that it'll send automakers to the graveyard, with China's factories pumping out EVs and taking over our markets. Trump is calling out this rush to electric as a potential bloodbath for the middle class, with jobs vanishing as factories shift gears to less labor-intensive EV production. Now Trump's laying out his playbook. He's looking to scrap the incentives that have been fueling the EV fire, aiming to give gas cars a fighting chance. He's all about bringing back balance, saying let's not put all our eggs in the electric basket, especially when it could mean giving China the upper hand. Let's talk numbers. Last year, a bunch of electric cars, about 1.2 million, found new homes, but that's just a tiny slice of the pie, only 7.6% of all the cars sold. But hold on to your hats because they're aiming to boost that number to a whopping 70% being electric and another 30% being hybrids in just about a decade. Why, you ask? Well, cars and trucks are pretty much the heavyweight champions of carbon emissions in the US, and this pollution is stirring up all sorts of trouble with the climate as per Biden. This is huge because they're saying it'll cut down more than 7 billion tons of carbon over the next 30 years. That's like taking a year's worth of all the waste the US has ever put in the air and making it vanish. It's supposed to save the average Joe or Jane about $6,000 on fuel over a car's lifetime. But sadly, all these claims from Biden are pure lies, and I'm about to show you some proof that might shock you. First up, for those of you thinking that EVs save money on fuel, let me tell you what no EV maker wants to the hidden costs of owning an EV. Now, we will be talking about two major EV problems, one of which is even causing people to die. First up are the hidden costs of buying an EV. 
First up, the price tag. You're thinking, I'm doing the planet a favor, it can't be that bad, right? Well, brace yourself. On average, an EV could cost you about 20,000 more than a gas guzzler. Then there's this thing with the road use fees. Some places have this surprise charge because you're not paying the gas tax, which usually funds fixing the roads. Imagine buying a ticket to a concert and then being told you need to pay extra just to use the entrance. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. And insurance? Fasten your seatbelt for this, it's pricier. It's like the insurance companies think every EV is a spaceship. Repairs can be more complicated. Not every Joe and his garage can fix them, so you pay more just in case. Folks are having to pay nearly $6,000 every year just to insure their EV. But wait, there's more. Charging at home might save you from the highway bandits, but it's not just plug and play. Setting up a home charging station could tighten your wallet by a couple of grand. And if your home isn't ready for the future, you might need an upgrade, which means even more money. Now, here's a plot twist straight out of a thriller, the battery. This isn't your regular AA battery. It's more like the cost of a treasure chest. We're talking up to $20,000 to replace it. And these batteries have a shelf life. They don't go on forever, especially if you're an adventurer hitting the road often. Depreciation is like a ghost story for EV owners. You think you've invested in the future, but the value of your EV can drop faster than a horror movie jump scare. In just two years, Teslas lose nearly half their value. Let's dive into the software side of things. Cars today have more in common with your laptop than you might think. They run on millions of lines of code, just like the apps you use to order pizza or play games. And just like those apps can glitch out, so can your car's software. Imagine you're all excited, driving your shiny new electric car, and then out of the blue, it decides to play dead at a red light. EVs are quite prone to these issues. Imagine this, you're chilling, your car's autopilot is on, and you're feeling like you're in the future. Then whammo, the software glitches and things go south. It's not just about the inconvenience. There have been real scares and sadly even tragedies where things went wrong partly because the car's brain had a hiccup. Like there have been cases where cars on autopilot crashed because they didn't see something they were supposed to. It's like playing a video game and your controller stops working all of a sudden. Only in real life, you can't hit the reset button. Many people have already lost their lives due to the autopilot systems failing. In some cases, they can't even open the door of their car and get out after being in a crash because guess what? The door sensors also fail. So to sum up, the government is forcing us into EVs without making it obvious. Biden isn't telling us we can't buy gas cars anymore. What he's doing is setting the bar real high on how clean a car's exhaust should be, and it's up to the car makers to figure out how to leap over it. They could mix it up with gas cars, electrics, hybrids, you name it, as long as they keep the air cleaner. The thing is, this push towards electric isn't just about cutting down on smog or saving a few bucks at the pump. It's a full-on charge towards reshaping what is the means to drive in America. And yeah, it's gonna need a whole lot more than just rolling out new models. We're talking about enough charging stations to keep all these future rides humming and convincing folks that making the switch is worth it. But if the cost doesn't come down and the technology doesn't improve, the only people to suffer will be the middle class. Biden isn't acting on it, so we must. What do you think? Should political leaders be allowed to interfere in the car industry? Yes or no? I just uploaded a video about groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Do check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.